What is going on, Trash Talkers? We are back with another episode for you. In today's video, we're going to give you our Week 12 predictions for the entire NFL. All that and much more coming your way right now! Hey Trash Talkers, over 85% of you are still not subscribed to the channel. Please be sure to hit that red subscribe button and turn on notifications as it will help us create more daily content for you. Thank you and enjoy today's video. All right, Nick, week 12 is upon us and we are one day away from our slate of Thanksgiving Day games. Starting at 1230, we start off with the Chicago Bears taking on the Detroit Lions at Ford Field. Maybe the Lions get their first victory on Thanksgiving, Nick. Tell us what you got in this one. Well, yeah, they're the home team. They always play on Thanksgiving. They know what this atmosphere is like, except it's the Detroit Lions, and they don't have a win this season. They got close when they tied the Pittsburgh Steelers, but I don't think that's going to happen here. I think the Chicago Bears with Justin Fields offer a big problem for this defense. To me, the Lions have not been able to figure it out, and when you have a unique guy like Justin Fields on the other side of the field, Good luck in stopping him because he can throw the ball, he can run the ball. There isn't a thing this guy can't do. And I think with the other talent around them, David Montgomery, even Allen Robinson, Darnell Mooney, like they have some players that they can work with. And I just don't think the Lions will be, be able to keep up. I'm taking the Chicago Bears to win as the first team on Thanksgiving Day. Next up in our Thanksgiving slate of games, we see the Las Vegas Raiders taking on the Dallas Cowboys at 4.30. So mark your calendars for that one right before dinner starts. And the Las Vegas Raiders are coming in off of quite a few losses, not only on the football field, but on their roster as well. They really haven't gotten over the losses of Damon Arnett and Henry Ruggs. And right now they are just continuing to reel and they're taking on a Cowboys team who also lost some players. We're not sure that CD Lamb's going to be able to clear concussion protocol in time for this game. Amari Cooper's automatically out with COVID-19. The, the Cowboys, we saw what they put on the field without those two guys against the Kansas City Chiefs. The Las Vegas Raiders don't look all that great either. It's kind of like a battle of who can be worse right now. And I, I'm not looking forward to that because I expected a really good football game. And right now, I'm not really looking forward to this game. I think the Dallas Cowboys can eke it out. I think they're a better all-around football team. Their defense is going to get more stops on Derek Carr than the Raiders will be able to on Dak Prescott. So at the end of the day, I'm taking the Cowboys by a slight margin. I think they get the victory at Jerry World on a short week, and they can start resting up and getting healthy for the rest of the season to come. I like the Cowboys in this one, and you guys should too. Well, I'm glad at least one home team on Thanksgiving Day gets a win because in our final matchup on Thanksgiving Day, we have the Buffalo Bills taking on the New Orleans Saints, and the New Orleans Saints are not the same team we saw with Jameis Winston. They cannot do anything, and the defense is starting to feel the wear. They cannot stop anything as well. When you look at the Buffalo Bills, yeah, they just came off a horrible loss to the Colts, but at the end of the day, you got to stop Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs, and good luck doing that. On the defensive side of the ball, I mean, th this, te this defense is so good. They can stop anybody that the New Orleans Saints has. I really hope that Alvin Kamara stays away just for his sake. He can get a little bit healthier because there's no point in playing this game. The New Orleans Saints have no, no place being around the Buffalo Bills right now. The Bills are going to use this as a platform to show that they are still atop the AFC. They are still one of the best teams. And if you're going to go to the Super Bowl, you're going to have to go through them. The Buffalo Bills are going to come out on top tremendously in this game starting off our one o'clock slate on sunday we see the pittsburgh steelers taking on the cincinnati Bengals in an intra-divisional rivalry game in the afc north the pittsburgh steelers came off of a narrow loss against the los angeles chargers on sunday night football the steelers showed an ability to overcome some of the losses that they had on the field as far as their players are concerned no tj watt no minka fitzpatrick and while they gave up a ton of points on defense, the offense was able to keep up 
and keep in stride with Justin Herbert and company, I believe that the Steelers have shown an, a willingness to not only be able to run the ball, but he, go five wide and pass with the best of them. Big Ben is still hanging around, and I have to give him credit. I think he's about to turn to dust any second, but he hasn't yet, and he's still slinging the ball. I like the Cincinnati Bengals in this one. I think they're a much better team. I think they're a much stronger team, and they have the, the legs to be able to stand against the Pittsburgh Steelers, who just seem to be battered around right now. I like the Bengals, but it's going to be a close game. Bengals take it in this one. Up next, we have the Carolina Panthers taking on the Miami Dolphins, who are on a roll right now. And the Carolina Panthers under Cam Newton look like they might not be headed in the right direction after all. And with the Miami Dolphins on this roll, on this pace, being at home, Tonga Vailoa looking better each and every game. I'm taking the Miami Dolphins. The Carolina Panthers may have a strong defense but I don't trust Cam Newton to get past this Miami defense that is playing better and better and better. And I think Cam Newton's got to prove to us that that arm is fixed, that he can pass the ball and that he knows his offense before I'm willing to bet on him. Next up, we see the Philadelphia Eagles taking on their I-95 rivalry, New York Giants. And right now the Eagles are heading in an opposite direction than the Giants are. The Eagles are going up and the Giants are falling down. And the bigger they are, the harder they fall. The Philadelphia Eagles are looking to make a statement in this one. They are one game out of the final wild card spot behind the New Orleans Saints, and they need a massive victory. They have to take on the Giants and really show why they deserve to be in the playoffs. Jalen Hurts has surprised a lot of people this year with the way he's been able to lead this team. The offense with Devonta Smith and now getting Miles Sanders back has really sparked them to be able to score a lot of points. I like where this defense is headed as well. Darius Slay two pick sixes in his last two games definitely making a statement there i like the eagles in this one i think they roll over the giants in a big one and coming up next in a big game we have the tennessee titans taking on the new england patriots the new england patriots are on an incredible roll and the titans like they're reeling with the loss of derrick henry they cannot figure it out the texans were able to beat them if the Texans can do it. The Patriots sure as hell can. The New England Patriots are going to take their time and pick apart this Titans team that thinks they belong at the top of the AFC. It's really the Patriots who are going to show that they are the number one team in the AFC right now. Next up, we see the Atlanta Falcons take on the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Atlanta Falcons have been embarrassed for the final time. That, damn it, Matt Ryan's coming out, and he's coming out strong. I believe that the Atlanta Falcons are sick and tired of not scoring points. Three points in their last two games combined against the Dallas Cowboys and the New England Patriots, Nick, who you just talked about. It's not looking pretty for the Falcons, but this is the game where they turn things around. The Falcons are not out of the playoffs. As bad as they've played, a loss is a loss, and a win is a win. And right now, they could use a win, and they're right back in the thick of it. I like the Atlanta Falcons. This is my lock of the week. The Atlanta Falcons will destroy the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars have no business being on an NFL football field right now. I like the Atlanta Falcons, and they're going to take full advantage of this one. Next up, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Jonathan Taylor looks incredible right now. And the Buccaneers, they don't have that big man Vita Vea. So who's going to stop this man? Well, I think that the rest of the guys for the Buccaneers are going to pick up that slack. We saw that Saquon Barkley didn't have a great outing against the Buccaneers in the run game. And I believe that Jonathan Taylor is not going to either. I believe Jonathan Taylor will get suppressed in this matchup. If the Colts don't have him, then their offense as a whole suffers because Carson Wentz is not what he used to be as a passing quarterback, and he is merely a game manager. Tom Brady is more than that. He is doing much more than that, and the Buccaneers are getting healthier. They are going to come out on top against the Indianapolis Colts. In what could possibly be the worst game in Week 12, we see the New York Jets head down to Houston to take on the Texans in what should be the biggest snooze fest known to mankind. The New York Jets terrible the houston texans not as terrible which is the only reason that i'm taking them in this one they saw they showed that they can actually compete with some of the better teams the new york jets haven't they gave up 175 points in a four game span this team is atrocious jd has no idea what they're doing robert salah hasn't figured out what a defense looks like ever since he left the bay area i don't know what the hell the jets are doing the houston texans at least look like some semblance of a football team i like the houston texans at this one but i'm not paying attention to a morsel of this game 
Next up, we have the Los Angeles Chargers taking on the Denver Broncos, and who doesn't love a good divisional matchup? The Denver Broncos coming off this bye week just saw the Los Angeles Chargers put up 41 points on the Pittsburgh Steelers, which means you know Justin Herbert's going to come and ball out against this Denver Broncos defense, but can Teddy Bridgewater match him? No, he can't, and this run game isn't going to help either. It's going to take a lot to stop this Chargers offense, and the Broncos don't have the talent, especially without Von Miller. No Bradley Chubb still. So who is getting to him? I believe that Justin Herbert's going to have a massive game and it's just going to be too much for Teddy Bridgewater to get over. This offense will not be able to keep up and the Chargers will come out on top. Next up, we see the Minnesota Vikings take on the San Francisco 49ers with two of the most explosive wide receivers in the NFL. We see Justin Jefferson and Debo Samuel going head to head and obviously they don't play against each other, but these guys are going to take advantage, full advantage at that of very porous secondaries the minnesota vikings have not been able to stop a nosebleed all season long patrick peterson is a shell of what he once was and now the 49ers without jason verrett are just reeling i mean this team cannot stop anything on the back end they need nick bosa to get home for them to be able to stop anything in the passing game I don't think that's going to be the case because Kirk Cousins and this offense, they can run the ball as well. I like the Vikings a lot. I think they're going to eke out a victory in Santa Clara. I like the Vikings in this one. It's good news for the Vikings because in our next matchup, we have the Los Angeles Rams taking on the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay Packers suffered a big loss to the Vikings last week, and they're hoping that they can right this ship. But when you have the Los Angeles Rams in front of you, they have Odell Beckham Jr. and Von Miller on top of all their other elite talent. It's going to be hard to stop. You just lost Elton Jenkins, your starting left tackle, who is replacing David Bakhtiari, who's been out all season. So that left side is completely unblocked. That is Aaron Rodgers' blind side. So good luck to him trying to stay upright with Leonard Floyd, Aaron Donald, and Von Miller coming to attack you. The Rams are poised to get a big victory this week week to write that loss over the 49ers this is how you come out of a bye week the los angeles rams are going to get a massive statement victory over the green bay packers this week next up we see odell beckham jr's former team come out in the cleveland browns taking on the baltimore ravens the cleveland browns they have been so up and down they have not been the same team over the last few weeks that we thought they were early on in the season and right now, Baker Mayfield, whether he's dealing with injuries or not, nobody really knows. The, apparently, the fracture healed in his in his opposite shoulder. Not exactly sure what's going on with him right now, but at the end of the day, the Baltimore Ravens are the best team in their division for a reason. This is a Sunday night football matchup that is going to really lend itself to a Baltimore Ravens defense that is going to absolutely squash anything the Cleveland Browns can do on offense. Jarvis Landry may or may not play in this one, but even if he does, he's going to be very limited. He's not going to be a difference maker. That means you're kind of hanging your hat on Donovan Peoples-Jones and Richard Higgins. I mean, not the greatest world beaters you've ever seen. At the end of the day, the Baltimore Ravens getting Lamar Jackson back, having Marquise Hollywood Brown and Rashad Bateman. I believe that this offense is going to take full advantage of the Browns. I like the Ravens in a very close Sunday night football matchup. The Ravens take this one. And for our Monday night football game, we have the Seattle Seahawks taking on the Washington football team. And if you saw these records, you would get the teams wrong. I guarantee it because Seattle Seahawks are a shell of themselves. Russell Wilson is not the same Russell Wilson from the, from the beginning of the season. And with the Washington football team playing as well as they are, this is my lock of the week. The Washington football team are at home. They are playing in a massive game under the lights, and we're going to see this defense come to play. The Seattle Seahawks cannot get DK Metcalf going. They cannot get Tyler Lockett going. Russell Wilson is struggling behind this offensive line, and Chris Carson is not coming back for the rest of the season. Alex Collins is not doing the job. The Seattle Seahawks are going to continue to struggle against this Washington team, and we're going to see Taylor Heineke continue to impress us as the the Washington football team starting quarterback. All right, well, I want to hear from you guys. Let us know in the comments down below what you think of our predictions for Week 12 in the NFL. Let us know what you think about some of these games that we have on Slate, which games you're most interested in. I want to hear from you guys, so let us know in the comments below. All right, well, that'll be all for now. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. We go live every single day. That'll be all. Peace and love.